of Black America. Black history, lost, stolen, or strayed. Never fit in that. Never get in that at all. This is more like it. Now, what's the whitest thing you know? Whiter than the driven snow, whiter than the whites of your eyes? Sugar. Non integrated, non black, sweet sugar. But you see, there is a black man in your sugar. His name is Norbert. Rillier. Norbert Rillier in uh, 18... in 1846 invented a vacuum pan to revolutionize the sugar refining industry. Now, you have to dig to find that fact. I mean, it's not much history, but it's still history. Now, uh, what do you stand in? In your shoes. Now, there's just you and your shoes, isn't it? Nope. See, there's uh, a black man standing in your Oxfords with you. Sharing your soul and your heel is a man, his name is Jan Ernst Metzeliger. And in 1863, this is a drawing by the kids, Metzeliger invented the machine that made mass-produced shoes possible. Now, you have to dig around for that fact, too. And again, it's not much history, but it's history. Am I coming in clear to uh, California? I mean, is this TV signal driving through a pass in the Sierra Nevada mountains and slipping into San Francisco? Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Jim Beckworth. Jim Beckworth out of St. Louis, hunter, trapper, and honorary chief of the Crow tribe of Indians. We had trouble finding you, Jim. Though you helped open the West, you didn't make the books. Chicago, right here, where the Wrigley Building is young fellow by the name of Jean-Baptiste de Sable. Jean-Baptiste, he founded you, Chicago, when he traded with the Indians. And of course, there it is right at that particular time. It was called Eschicago, or Stinking Onion, by the Indians. And de Sable, he didn't even change the name at all. Now you take the Lewis and Clark expedition here, right in there. You'll find a black man named York, helping to open the West. Those men are trying to wash the black out of York. That's what you might call historically significant because a lot of people think we ought to wash white, but we ain't gonna, you see. Texas, coming to you, Texas, right down the Chisholm Trail, right here. Right down there with 5,000 black cowboys who never made it to the Hollywood West. Did you know that, huh? In the same group, there was one black outlaw. His name was Deadwood Dick who claimed his soul brothers were Bat Masterson, Billy the Kid, and Jesse James. Did what Dick used to ride into the saloon, order two drinks, one for himself and one for his horse. And here's his horse, a drink in a shot of red eye with straw. And how about the 186,000 blacks who fought on the Union side during the Civil War? 38,000 died. How about Teddy Roosevelt's charge up San Juan Hill? It wasn't just the Rough Riders who made it. Four black regiments went right up with Teddy. They didn't get lost going up the hill. They got lost in the history books. How about the North Pole? Snow White? Well, the first man there was black, Matthew Henson. He spoke Eskimo. And uh, he was Admiral Perry's navigator. And although he made it first to the pole, it never quite made it to the history books. 
And how about your heart? Can we get there? All right. Daniel Hale Williams first performed open heart surgery successfully. Now, this list could go on forever. Blacks who made it, blacks who made history, but who didn't get into the history text at all. And the strange thing is how little there is about us in the textbooks. Napoleon once said, history is a fable agreed upon, and the fable agreed upon up to now is that American history is white on white. But sometimes we did get into the history books. All wrong. Now you take this one. The Growth of the American Republic, 1942 edition. Samuel Eliot Morrison, Henry Steele Cummager. Quote, as for. This has to do with uh, slavery. As for Sambo, Sambo, Professor Morrison, Sambo, Professor Cominger, as for Sambo, whose wrongs moved the abolitionists to wrath and tears, there is some reason to believe that he suffered less than any other class in the South from its peculiar institution. Peculiar institution means slavery. Although brought to America by force, the incurably optimistic Negro soon became attached to the country and devoted to his white folks." Unquote. Those lines were written by two Pulitzer Prize winning white Northern professors. Slavery, that's the place everybody likes to start Negro history. You have ignorant black men being brought over from Africa in chains. Terrible thing, slavery. But this way slavery is taught, it sort of takes the sting out of it. Because the way it's usually taught, people think that we Afro-Americans started with nothing but little grass skirts like the cats in the Tarzan movies. And though America gave us slavery, America kindly gave us religion and a lick or two of education. And when we get more jobs and more education, then up from slavery. But uh, we had something before we left Africa, something more than rhythm. I mean, we had a high culture. The culture was so high that uh, great artists in the world are still borrowing from it. Now, here's a sculpture by an unknown African artist. And here's what Paul Clay took from him. Now, here's a work by an unknown black African, and Pablo Picasso liked what he saw. Another African design, and Modigliani swiped it, or he was influenced by it, or whatever polite word you want to use. Another black African artist, and Picasso didn't change it very much. I mean, when you look at this copy, you got to give us a little more than rhythm. You got to give us style. Now, if you tell the history of slavery right, you got a big problem on your hands. The slave trader didn't take some savage out of Africa. He took a human being. He sold him like an animal and separated him from his family. America invented the cruelest slavery in the history of the world because it broke up black families. After slavery was over, America kept breaking up the black man's family. And that's some awful history to teach. Now, if you want to look history right straight in the eye, you're going to get a black eye. Because it isn't important whether a few black heroes got lost or stolen or strayed in America's history textbooks. What's important is why they got left out. Now, this country has got a psychological history. There was a master race, and there was a slave race. And though there isn't any political slavery anymore, those same old attitudes have hung around. I mean, the burning part of burn, baby, burn, is right here in this classroom. We want to thank Mrs. Lovely Billups and the whole gang here at fourth grade for the brilliant and intelligent artwork that uh, they've done here to make this whole broadcast sing. I want you guys to keep pretending that I'm not here. You're doing a great job and just... Uh, Keep on drawing and reading and writing, doing what you have to do, because I'm going to talk about some other kids.